G'day, I'm Dan. Welcome to Travel Reps. This week we're off to Rome. Rome's a very exciting place to visit, as you can imagine, even if you haven't been there. It, uh, the word itself conjures up great thoughts of history and, and architecture. And so basically with Roman history, we talk about ancient Rome, and that refers to the Roman era, which was 56 BC to 400 AD. So it's quite a period. But ever since then, there's been different ages and different styles of building and uh, right through to modern day. But as you walk around Rome, you get a feeling of this place is hundreds of years old, if not thousands. So the best places to get the ancient history or the Roman history, obviously we all know the Colosseum. There's another place called the Roman Forum, which is great. And of course, Circus Maximus or Circus Massimo or whatever you want to call it. But that's where they have the chariot races and they're all depicted well in modern movies. What I love about the Roman Forum is when you're standing there, you think about how many um, chariots used to run along those cobblestone roads and, and not only that, but donkeys and carts as well. But the number of Romans and uh, every time I think of Romans, I think of sandals and the amount of people walking on those streets. So it's great to immerse yourself in that. But as you walk around the rest, the more modern part of Rome, it's still quite old. The buildings are sensational. The architecture is great, monuments everywhere. And also a, a little bit of the origins of our ancestry and modern learning. We know that the Greeks started learning and that was after they started in, in the Middle East. But for Europe, the Greeks led the way to the Romans, and then the Romans were fantastic at what they built. So today's Roman, very different, but a modern way of life. There's nothing I like more than sitting in a coffee shop and watching the modern Roman walk past. They've got a great lifestyle, and um, basically they're very colourful and flamboyant people. So that's something that's pretty interesting. This week we do a basic walk. And this tour or the walking tour is a great way to start with Rome. As we always say, if you start with a great itinerary, you're going to end up with a great holiday. So enjoy Rome. We're going to have a look as we're going to start in the south at Circus Maximo. We're going to move up to the Colosseum about a five minute walk, easy walk. And from the Colosseum, another five minutes to the Roman Forum. And then five minutes more around to the Capitol buildings and the Victor Emmanuel II monument. From there, we have the choices of go north to the Trevi Fountain, probably about five minutes walk away, five to seven. And then from the Trevi Fountain, back to the Pantheon, then another two minutes to Piazza Navona, a good five to seven minutes to cross the river to the court, the Supreme Court, and then Castle of San Angelo, another five minutes, then probably about seven to 10 minutes walk to Vatican City to view St. Peter's Basilica and the Sistine Chapel. From there, another 10 minutes walk back to St. Angelo's Castle and then around behind the Supreme Court and out to the Spanish Steps. Now that would be probably about close to half an hour's walk from the Vatican. So probably about 10 to 15 minutes from the Supreme Court. We'll notice here that this is a railway station it would be about 25 minutes from the Spanish stairs, probably about 20 minutes from the Colosseum or 25 minutes from Trevi Fountain. So let's go in and have a look. Our first port of call is Circus Maximo. Circus Maximo was a track designed for chariot races. It's an ancient Roman stadium and was built for the entertainment of the locals. In ruins, there's a little bit of the architecture left. And because it's on the metro line, it's a good starting place for us. 
So now we're going to reface ourselves north and have a look at the street heading due north. That's going to take us up to a famous arch and of course a famous building that you might recognise. The arch is the Arch of Constantine, which is a triumphant arch in Rome dedicated to the Emperor Constantine the Great. The arch was commissioned in 312 AD by the Roman Senate to commemorate Constantine's victories. And of course, that's leading us on to one of the main features of Rome, the Colosseum or Colisio. And if we have a little bit better look at that, it's not only from the outside, but the inside and the history on the inside is very important. So a tour of the internals, I think, would open your eyes to how do they get those lines to run out of the ground? They lift up hidden hidden doors in the ground of the stadium and underneath lines would come up, plus other gladiators and so on. So this is a pretty special stop on our tour of Rome. And a lot of people would like to stay there. So Colosseum was built in 70 to 72 AD. So just after the birth of Christ. And it was a gift to the Roman people uh, for the games, the gladiator bouts, and also hosted dramas and reenactments and, and acting. And they even had public executions here. So a lot of history involved, and as you can see there, looking down, you can see below the floor, so the basement areas. From here, we're going to move again. Let's face ourselves to the north. We're going to move to the west. As we come up to the west, we're coming up here into what's called the region known as the Roman Forum. Three columns here they were built 400 BC and they're still standing. So pretty awesome effort for construction back 2000 years ago or two and a half thousand years ago. We come up to more ruins again, dating back to 400 BC. Up to a place we call the wedding cake or the typewriter. But if you see here at, in the Roman Forum and the ruins, you can come around here, come up cobblestones, up onto the main street, and you can go through these buildings. Now, the importance of this is, this area is the Capitol buildings. The Capitol buildings are museums, conservatoriums, and not only that, the square was designed by Michelangelo. So obviously pretty famous in its own right. Spectacular. The stairs on the way up offer us a very good photo stop. Quite impressive. And crowded on this day too. And again, we'll orientate ourselves to the north. Now make our way virtually north from the steps. Coming up here, we're going to go to an area called Piazza Venezia. Now from here, we'll have a great view of this building. Now the building has different names. It's called the Altar of the Fatherland. It's also known as the Wedding Cake and to the locals, it's often called the Typewriter. And we can also call it the Victor Emmanuel II building or monument. From here, we can go to the Trevi Fountain, which is probably what we're going to recommend. And again, orientate ourselves to the north and pull out a little bit. So you've got choices. As I said, you can go to the Trevi Fountain, which is here at the top and to the north of where we are, or you could cut across to the Pantheon. Now, what would be the idea of skipping Trevi to do it at the end of our tour? But for today's purpose, you can 
walk, work your way through the streets to the Trevi Fountain, or for those who are traveling by themselves and don't necessarily like back streets, of course, there's a main thoroughfare. So you take a little slightly longer way around. The Trevi Fountain, it's one of the oldest water courses or water sources in Rome. The fountain dates back to ancient Roman times and the construction of the aqueducts. And 19 BC, that provided water to not only the Trevi Fountain, but also the Roman baths. Busy day at Trevi. There it is there. Unfortunately, we haven't got a good view of the fountain, but we can get there. Absolutely stunning. The white marble sculptures are, well, truly amazing, but also um, it's a place where people go to make a wish. You've probably heard about coins in the Trevi Fountain, or coins in the fountain. So when you throw your coins in, you get to make a wish. Rumour has it that each year when they clean out the fountain, they take over a million dollars, which goes to charity. And we're going to make our way west following the yellow lines, which you can see, and I can see because the buildings cover them up. Coming into view now, it's a pantheon. Again, a fantastic building in its own right. Probably one of the best preserved monuments in ancient Rome. It was built 25 BC. Built by Marcus Agrippa and said to be a stunning example of pre-Christ architecture. Pantheon, even though it was built 25 BC, it suffered from a horrific fire and was eventually rebuilt. So from here, we face ourselves to the north again and head west over to a famous area called Piazza Navona. This is a very popular area for those wishing to enjoy the Roman way of life. It's, I guess, a fashionable place with artists. You'll see artists around, of course, lots of tourists. And it is surrounded by palaces, churches, cafes and restaurants. And you can see some of them there. But the cafes are a particularly important part of our visit. So let's go in and have a look at some of those. You can see there's lots of eating places, cafes everywhere, outdoor, indoor, artists, and um, lots to see and do in this square. And probably a good recommendation for lunch if you are on a walking tour. Obviously, it depends how long you stop at each place you visit. So terrific buildings and you would say a lot of the wealthy of Rome live overlooking this square. An apartment here would be one of the most expensive in Rome. After a nice lunch, we'll face north again. And we're gonna head north towards the river. And we've got some choices here, because when you get to the river, you can cross the river to the Supreme Court. To the west is the castle of San Angelo, or the Castle of the Angels. Castle depends on which area of the world you come from. What I like is the Supreme Court is a stunning facade or has a stunning facade. Castle of St. Angelo was built in the second century. So both stunning buildings. Let's go in and have a look. Castle St. Angelo or the castle of the Holy Angel, is a part of Rome's history. He used as a fortress and a papal residence, a prison and an execution ground. It brings us on to the main thoroughfare through to St. Peter's. St. Peter's Square, St. Peter's Basilica. And without doubt, this is often referred to as the greatest church in Christian Rome. In Catholic tradition, St. Peter's Basilica is believed to be the burial place of St. Peter, who was one of the 12 apostles of Jesus and the first bishop of Rome. 
beside it is the Sistine Chapel. And you'll be able to see it marked there. So the Sistine Chapel is here, the Basilica is here. So Sistine Chapel, obviously the home of the Pope when, when he's in the Vatican City, was erected in 1473 and completed in 1481 for Pope Sextus IV. And that's how it got its name, Sistine. It's famous for the Renaissance frescoes painted by Michelangelo. Back along our path, let's face the north again, so see where we're going. So we're heading east back to Castle San Angelo. And we go past there around the edge of the gardens, around behind the Supreme Courts, and another beautiful park. And we cross the river. In the river. So Spanish steps. They were built in 1723 and completed in 1725. Became a meeting place for artists, thanks to their unique design, which the artists found inspiring. The Piazza of Spain at the foot of the steps is named in honour of the Spanish Embassy. And as the story has it, the steps were built to link the Spanish Embassy to the church. It's a busy day at the Spanish Steps. As you can see the church basilica in the background and the Spanish step. And you can't see a lot of artists today, but they're there with their sketch pads. So that's our walking tour of Rome. And you'll probably note here if we face to the north again. See over to the west of the Spanish steps. It's a railway station just here, the metro. So where have we been and what did we see? Our tour took us to Circus Maximo. Ten minutes walk up to the Colosseum. Then uh, although it's only five minutes walk through to the Roman Forum, there is so much to see and do. And obviously it can take a bit more. It's only about another five minutes to the wedding cake and then would be probably about seven to ten minutes through to the Trevi Fountain leisurely seven to ten minutes through to the Pantheon and about two minutes walk through Piazza Navona. From there it's probably about 15 minutes up to the river, 10-15 and of course 15 minutes through the Vatican, 15 minutes back to Castle San Angelo and then probably about another 10 minutes walk to the Spanish Steps. Now, that Spanish steps would be about 25 minutes from the railway station. So that probably gives us a good feel uh, where everything is. Now, there's a lot more to see and do. So that's Rome. In a nutshell, there's plenty more to see and do in Rome, obviously. And I can recommend the Basilica Santa Maria Maggiore, Palatine Hill. You spend some time there. You've got the bars, the Roman bars, Basilica of St. John Lateran. Got the catacombs, which a lot of people love the catacombs. Got the Appian Way, which is a major road uh, around Rome, and many piazzas and plazas and that with coffee shops and so on. When we talk about coffee shops, the locals tend to go in, stand at the bar and have a coffee because that's cheaper than sitting down for coffee and it's cheaper than sitting outside. So the most expensive coffee is to sit outside on the boardwalk or the footpath watch life go by. But for tourists, it's a great way to have a coffee. Enjoy Rome.